Good morning, I'm Mr. Campbell. We're at Deep Run High School and this is my government class. So, yesterday we read a case about a student uh, who said some things on social media and was punished for it. So as we're getting ready for our mock trial next week, what we wanna start thinking about today is how do lawyers think? How do Supreme Court justices think? Because for us, the question is not whether or not what she did was appropriate or not, it's was the punishment constitutional or not. So today, I'm going to have you divided up into groups. We'll be thinking about judicial activism, we'll be thinking about judicial restraint, and you all will be coming up with answers as a team. The goal for us is let's start thinking how lawyers and justices think. So go ahead, open up your question set there so you can use those. Those are your individual opinions, but now you're gonna be working together as a group. So what we're gonna do is, I've got some paper that I put up. There's some paper on the boards there, but what you can do is you can just take those down and you can move them to your desk. Um, you guys, I'm gonna have you move up. You all will be one group here, and William, you can grab that piece of paper. If you all wanna write, up it on the wall, that's fine, but if it's easier to bring it down, you can, all right? Uh, you all will be one group back there. Your, yours is up there, but since you're a bigger group, if it's easier to grab that paper, bring it down, you can. Um, you all have that piece of paper, and guys, you've got that big one right there, okay? So, what I want you to do is, I want you to think of these first two questions. In the case of our student here, we know how the justice voted. This went to the Supreme Court. They made their decision. So I want you to think, in what ways did some justices show judicial restraint? And question two, in what ways did the justices show judicial activism? So how did they show restraint? How did they show activism? And if you don't remember which ones those are, I can put this back up for you. What's the difference between, oops, there we go. What's the difference between activism and restraint? So go ahead, we can grab these. Uh, I'll give you all some markers as well if you need and you wanna write with those so you can make it easy, but talk to each other. Because as justices, how many justices are there on the Supreme Court? Nine. Why nine? Odd numbers so there will be no tie. Odd numbers so there will be no tie, good. You're kind of in the same groups. We don't quite have nine in every group, that's okay, but the idea is still the same because ultimately, I'll have you vote on this decision as well. All right, so grab your pieces of paper. We'll keep them up on the wall. I'm gonna be coming around. I'm gonna be talking to y'all. Mr. Crenshaw is gonna be helping some of you all uh, out as well. So if you have questions, let us know. But again, remember this. We're not talking about whether or not what she did was appropriate or not. We're talking about was the punishment constitutional or not, all right? So go ahead, you can move around. If you wanna get up and move, you can. All right, y'all grab your paper there. Let me get you all some markers. Yeah, so like the restraint was when they said like freedom of speech is like, yeah, it, it's like freedom of speech is there always, even in public schools. I think that was the restraint. I think the activism was them saying that if it was on school grounds, she could have been punished, but since she wasn't, they showed the judicial restraint there. Yeah. That's what I think. Okay, uh, it talks about what she posted, and it's actually very vague. In all honesty, if they did, if they didn't know she went to that school, it could have been about eighty. So she could have been like a competitor or something. So I feel like, like again, like the freedom of speech did, did apply there. Let's think about the school rules. How did the judges interpret the school rules? So you can look back if you want to pull back up that article. Look at what some of the judges said about how they said like, oh, this is how we're thinking about the rules. So right now we're just thinking about what are the rules? So if you're with the school, is that activism or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I would think they may show activism too in the sense that, you know, social media is a new thing that's happening. So they may set a precedence with their ruling based on, you know, something that's new in the world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you got to look at it from that perspective. Is it activism because it establishes a new precedent, or you know, are they showing restraint because they're keeping with the old norms? Exactly. All right. Good. All right. Help us out, Crenshaw. Um, okay. You are. 
you did, like, so what do you got? Imagine. Give us a they starter. This is my, uh, my thing. For the uh, activism okay. side, you can okay. put... So, like, the thing, I'll tell you the same thing I told the group over here. When you look at this, social media is a current thing. It's a newer thing, okay? So, do the judges make a change in a ruling because of something new that's in place? Would they show activism by ruling or making a change in a ruling because it's with the times? Because the Founding Fathers didn't know Well, about the it. Founding Fathers yeah. had no idea yeah, about yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah. They were just concerned with freedom of speech, yeah. okay? Uh -huh. Your Bill of Rights. But the question is, do they, do they show activism in that sense because they are making a ruling based on the times, or are they showing restraint because they're staying with the status quo? This is how it's always been done, and this is what we're doing. And this girl didn't get in trouble outside. She did, right? You've got to look at that. We'll look at the article again. Go back and look at how the judges ruled and how the judges rule will determine, you know, what you would want to put in each column. Good. So he's thinking about now that we've kind of thought about, okay, how did the judges look at this? The next step is going to be what might the lawyers think? What might the student think? So excellent. So hang on to that. And check on the other groups. We'll see what they're doing. And Mr. Crenshaw will come up, talk to y'all as well, and then we're going to go on to the next question. All right? There we go. Bringing in those First Amendment ideas. No, I know I probably spelled it wrong. It's okay. It's not. We're not in English class. Because she's a minor. All right. They're saying that you're not looking at the actual objects. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If it goes off ground of school, it's still in the article. Like in the article. I don't think it is though, because in the article she didn't even name it. Seems like most of us or most of you all have kind of figured out that idea from restraint of activism. That's on the side of the judges. So now, we want to think about how might a lawyer, because some of you for a mock trial will end up being lawyers, how might a lawyer argue in this case for the student? Now you got to remember this as we talked about. In a civil trial, do you get an attorney? No. But you get one when? Criminal. Criminal. Good. Now the thing is this, if that's the situation, you might be in a situation where you are representing a client and you might listen. I think my client, I, I don't agree with what she did, but that's not what we're here to argue for. And some of those lawyers might be like, you know what, my client, I, I think that they might have been in the wrong, but I've got to fight for them. So this is when we talked about earlier with our debates. Some of you are like, ah, I'm not sure if I'm on this side or that side, that's okay, because you've got ideas from both sides. So to help you all out, I want you to work as a team. Let's pretend that you are lawyers for the student, all right? What arguments would you make that, yes, the school did violate her First Amendment freedoms by punishing her, all right? So come up with arguments, come up with ideas, come up with reasons. You can pull some from the article that you read, or as students yourselves who use social media, what would you want your lawyers to argue for you? So think about it. Think about, think about how the school may have overstepped. Keep that in mind. You said it was like a Starbucks. Okay, so that, should, that could be your argument, your First Amendment argument in favor of the student is, you know, the school showed overreach, they overstepped in the sense that it didn't happen on school grounds. You're invading the privacy of the students. Like, yeah, she's not, you know, she's not publicly saying to anyone, she's just talking to her friends, like on Snapchat or something. Okay, good. I like how you brought the privacy rights. So you think about other amendments that we've talked that have also gone with that. Mm -hmm. So good, you're going beyond that first mint. We still want to stick to that first mint, but I like that yeah. you also brought in others too. All right. Everybody listen up real quick. I had an incident that happened with a student a couple of years back. He got in trouble for smoking and he had left his home and was walking to school and smoked on his way to school and he still got in trouble for that. And the school cited that from the moment he left his door, even if he's a walker and on his way to school, that the school was responsible for him. So I'm just throwing that in there. No, that's good folks. Remember we talked about earlier, just because you're 18 doesn't mean you can't just leave school. So yes. think of other precedent. Good.
I don't know how far we'll go. No, then we'll have to question this, is that constitutional or not? All right. Okay. Good. So, you've thought of arguments as lawyers for our students, but now for our case, some of you will be lawyers on the other side. So, now, I want you to think of the perspective of, let's say that you are now lawyers representing the school system. What arguments would you make that the school did not violate our students' first amendment freedom of speech? So, think of, yeah. I've already given it to you. Use that argument. Think of Mr. Crenshaw's argument. Think of uh, past press precedent. Think about our own school rules here. Think about what you said for the student. Think about some of the opposites now. So now you're on the other side, but this is why you're in groups so you can bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, so like, hey, punishing their student for what she did was not a violation of her freedom of speech. I love that. I, I want you to keep that in mind because just as you said, there's consequences and that's going to be the big thing here. So excellent. So what I want you to start thinking about since you're already on that track, the next question is going to be if you were a judge. All right, excellent. So kind of like the opposite of like when you're arguing for the students, like, hey, she's not off or she's not on campus, but now the school could argue, it's like, well, even though she's not off campus, she's still talking about campus? Yeah. All right, excellent. She acts as a representative of the student. I like that. You are a representative of your school no matter where you are, just as your representative community. So, all right, excellent argument. So in a second here, after I, we check on the other groups, the next question will be is, as justices, thinking about both arguments and thinking about what you all just brought up. Mm, she wasn't on campus, but she was talking about things involved on campus. No, but the thing is, she never stated the name. She never stated what she was actually mad about. Oh, okay. This is now the tricky part. You all have talked about judicial activism, judicial strength, and the way that those judges saw things. You've talked about lawyers on both sides and presented both arguments. Now you got to be the justices. But remember, this case was from a couple years ago. We've had several new justices added to the court since then. So we have a different court with different ideas. So now you all are kind of taking place of those new justices saying, yeah, we're bringing these new ideas. We're students ourselves. A lot of justices can pull from their own backgrounds and experiences. You all use social media. You understand how this works. You see it all the time. So we want you to discuss this case. If you were justices, do you agree with the past justices or do you have different ideas? So use your arguments. And what I want you to do is I want you all to vote. I know we're not all in groups of nine, that's okay. But I want you, once you all have justices have discussed things, I want you amongst your groups to vote. Are you voting in favor of the student? Or are you voting in favor of the school system? And then we'll collect your votes together. It does not have to be unanimous, as we've seen with the Supreme Court. If you don't disagree, then you stick to your guns with that. It does not have to be unanimous. Talking about that cheer program specifically, which she never stated, she never said any of the names. She literally, could, she could have been anything. She could have like had a bad ball. She could have like an automatic She could have done any of it. I know. It's so vague. And that's the problem. It's so vague. There's no reason to punish. Exactly. Because first off, it's social. It's a social post. No one cares about that. Yeah. It's like it maybe she said a slur, maybe, but like no, she just said the f word. Yeah. That's it. They might say, I can't quite take a judgment of this because it would be biased and would not be fair. For the Supreme Court, that's rare. But it does happen. So technically, we could have a tie, and that's why a lot of times, remember, we used to be, y'all remember how many judges we used to have? 
six. But then, but then, they, but they kept adding because they realized if we keep having even numbers, we'll have a tie. Now with nine, technically wouldn't have a tie. But there have been some occasions or a possibility where a judge could be like, I legally can't. Yeah, it's rare. But technically, hmm, I don't know if it's something for us to look up. Well, well, well you got a, you got a computer there. <laughs> At Lookup has a Supreme Court justice ever abstained from a vote. Y'all voted? All right, y'all voted? 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 I, for a student, like, as you, all right, so uh, we'll start over here. For y'all vote, y'all's vote, did you all, uh, who won in your case? Was it the student? So you all, all voted in favor of the student? Anybody go against the student? Okay. <laughs> Unanimous, all right. Okay, big group over here. As a total, did you all end up going to student side or school side? Okay. Let's, all right, back corner. Student or school? Student. Student, okay. All right, so, so we've got a unanimous vote there. All right, well, thank you for joining us today. I hope you all enjoyed our lesson on the Supreme Court and pretending to be lawyers and justices. Go on, <laughs>